hail the king of cowboys. If you've watched any show or film from the mid 30s to the 80s, you've seen Roy Rogers. And hopefully you've also heard his melodious voice. Can you think? Think? Yeah, think. Go to the all right. The guy was adored by an entire nation, but was his family life as loving? How did a tragedy put him on the path to lifelong romance? I think today's answers will pull at your heartstrings for this toughened cowboy. Howdy, I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, with an inside look at the personal life of Roy Rogers. So if you enjoyed today's video like I hope you will, please give it a thumbs up to help it circulate and subscribe to our channel so you catch our next reminiscent rodeo. Now, without further ado, let's make like a tumbleweed and skedaddle. What race was Roy Rogers? Rogers hit the ground running with a very unique upbringing. The building in Cincinnati where Rogers was born, well, it later became Riverfront Stadium. A fact that Rogers loved to joke about by saying he was born on second base. His dad wasn't happy with his joy or big city life. So he did what we all do. He built a houseboat. Then when this aquatic and nomadic lifestyle got to be a bit too much, the family bought a plot of land to build an actual house on. Then the infamous Great Flood of 1913 actually made it perfect to sail the houseboat right onto their new plot of land. Boom, new home acquired. His mother, meanwhile, provided a very meaningful layer to Roger's identity. Rogers has Native American ancestry on his mother's side, specifically Choctaw. Part of this affected his appearance. His eyes were very expressive, but Roy's granddaughter, Julie, revealed that some industry leaders didn't actually like the shape of them and made him use prescription eye drops to relax his muscles. They wanted him to look like Clark Gable, but when his eyes changed shape, fan mail poured in demanding to know what happened and let the man look how he really is. What was Roy Rogers' estate worth when he died? Roy's early working life looked nothing like how it ended. His family struggled a lot with money to the point where his dad's income wasn't enough and Roy, only into his second year of high school, joined his dad at the factory. Rogers wanted to keep up his studies during night school, but he got picked up for falling asleep during class. The whole thing was so hurtful, he dropped out and never came back. His family moved around a lot, and father and son took whatever gigs they could land. At one point, Roy worked at a labor camp, and if you've ever read Grapes of Wrath, you know exactly what that was like. No end in sight, just day after day of hard labor. That is, until his sister suggested he try out for a radio show. Problem was, this freshly bullied workaholic was pretty shy. Luckily, his sister helped him out and made him a cowboy outfit. Rogers conquered his fears and came away with an invite to play in a local band, the Rocky Mountaineers. From there, he transitioned between music and film usually combining his singing talents. And you probably saw him before you even realized, since he originally used his name, Leonard Sly. Before long, the archetype of singing cowboy had two favorites, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. At one time, his family was struggling to stay afloat. Then the shy factory worker became a sensational cowboy that was ranked as one of the top 10 money-making Western stars. For 16 years in a row, his estate was worth a whopping $150 million. Talk about rags to riches. Was Roy Rogers married when he met Dale Evans? Before Roy Rogers and Dale Evans became one of the most iconic Hollywood power couples to date, they weren't even on each other's radars. They were too busy swimming up river from heartbreak. Dale, herself a powerhouse in the Western scene, first got married when she was 14. She gave birth to a son a year later and ended up abandoned by husband number one. Twice more she'd marry and Rogers married twice as well. First to an admirer of his, but the marriage just lasted three years. Then a radio caller named Grace promised to bake Rogers a pie if he sang the Swiss yodel. Floaty, floaty. They also got a spouse out of the arrangement and the two adopted a daughter named Cheryl. Grace also had a biological daughter, Linda. 
Then tragedy struck. In 1946, Grace gave birth to a son, Rory Jr. But sadly, she ended up dying of complications related to the pregnancy. Rogers had actually met Dale back in 1944, not long after Linda's birth the year before. But nothing happened until after both were single. They fell in love very quickly. By 1947, the two married on New Year's Eve, ringing in the new year with the ultimate kiss. Then they became such an electrifying pair, dubbed the King of Cowboys and the Queen of the West. Of course, there were hiccups in their kingdom, as daughter Cheryl can easily recall. Part of her father's success stemmed from his unfailingly great one-liners, and Cheryl revealed, quote, those one-liners saved his life with my mom when she was exasperated with him. Apparently, a favorite was, you can take the kid out of the man, but you ain't got much left. Yeah, I gotta remember that one. He was also a bit of a pack rat, but man, is it a collection of stuff any nostalgia nut would love to see. Film memorabilia, costumes, photos, movie posters, sports merch, you name it. His cowgirl queen wasn't as excited as Cheryl said, quote, Mom would pitch a fit and call Beckins, Van, and Storage to take it away. What? Are you kidding? If you ever want to see their unbeatable chemistry, you've got a ton of options to choose from. They're in Don't Fence Me In, Rainbow Over Texas, Man from Oklahoma, and Bells of Rosarita, just to name a few. That's not even counting the Roy Rogers show and their Happy Trails duet. Nobody did it quite like them. Were all of Roy Rogers' children adopted? Roy Rogers would be part of one of the first and most successful blended Hollywood families. He was father to Cheryl, Linda, and Roy Jr. from his previous marriage. Then he and Dale started a family of their own. Roy and Dale proudly welcomed their daughter, Robin Elizabeth, into the world. But they had no time to celebrate this spectacular day. Doctors outright told the couple to avoid getting emotionally close to Robin. You see, Robin had been born with a heart defect and Down syndrome. So the doctor's advice was, quote, Visit her as little as possible because she's never going to know you. Her parents completely defied these words. And they loved Robin with their whole hearts. This incredible couple loved their baby for nearly two heart-wrenching years before the young girl died just before her second birthday. The cause was attributed to complications from mumps, the worst thing a parent can imagine. So while dealing with their own grief, Dale wrote Angel Unaware, a touching story of love and loss. One of the first memoirs about a parent whose child is special needs. It was revolutionary at the time and very much needed in the world. But the couple wasn't done turning their heartbreak into healing for others. They turned to adoption. They adopted another child named Sandy who had been abused along with a war orphan named Debbie. Then they adopted a seven-month-old Choctaw girl with whom Rory was connected through their cultural heritage. The significance of Rogers, his fame, and presence within the culture had several Western tribes name him Outstanding Indian Citizen of the Year in 1968. Marion had been born in the throes of World War II when the couple performed in Edinburgh. They visited an orphanage, and there was Marion. She had spent her entire life in different homes, but these two brought her to a sold-out concert. Marion enjoying a view from the wings, getting to watch her future parents perform in front of thousands. Because Roy and Dale initiated the adoption process soon after. Even with Marion joining the family as a teen, she would say, quote, When we were in the house, we were just a family. They weren't Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. They were mom and dad. What was the cause of death of Roy Rogers? Whatever trauma Rogers touched, he turned something heartfelt and uplifting from it. Sadly, time would of course prove the final unbeatable foe. Rogers was a respectable 86 years old when he died on July 6, 1998. Surrounded by family members, his cause of death, congestive heart failure. His wife appeared in public less and less after he passed. His beloved Dale Evans would die of the same exact thing. Just three years later, it said she died blaming herself for Roy's death. Husband and wife hid their own battles with congestive heart failure as long as they could, even as they felt their health decline in the final years of their lives. Dale Evans was buried beside her husband in California's Apple Valley, the duo watching over the West in their eternal sleep.
I think far too rarely we get to see good things when we go behind the scenes of our favorite stars. More often than not, pulling back the curtain reveals all sorts of dark secrets. And of course there was grief and hardship. But learning more about Roy Rogers meant finding out he was even better than we could have thought. Alright, that's enough of me. Now we need to hear from you all. Who grew up watching Roy Rogers? Did you have a favorite movie or a favorite song? What about a favorite one-liner? Get in the comments and tell us all things Dale Evans and all things Roy Rogers. Please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. And in the comments, mention who we should cover next. Thank you for watching. I am Nostalgic Nick. Happy trails to you. Tell me me.